so 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 okay uh, i i found that it is important to know that the sustainable development concept as it is seen now and used and practiced and embraced by countries by politicians and academia comes uh, it, it has a long history uh, behind and first of all to understand for those who are not very familiar with this relationship between security and development in the united nations system i i I tried in the first slide to, to uh, show that, you know, the main purpose of the United Nations, which is developed as a concept during the time of the Second World War, was peace and security, the international cooperation to solve other problems, including uh, economic or social problems, was not a uh, main priority, although it is, uh, it is mentioned in, in the charter. That makes a, a great difference because uh, you know, there are peace enforcement uh, uh, options available for the United Nations while cooperation for development is simply uh, a simply uh, 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 optional thing uh, and uh, it needs uh, everything that is uh, done is uh, on the way of recommendations. So what is very important for the, the economists among you and political scientists as well is that Development was not an object of study for the economists during the uh, in the first years after the war. The issue of underdevelopment in the world economy was overlooked completely. The, uh, the most famous uh, book that was uh, taught into the all universities, of, uh, that of pa Paul, uh, Paul Samuelson, did not even mention uh, the kind of problems that developing countries might have had. It is true that you know the world took time at the peak of the colonial years, uh, but it is the merit of the United Nations to come with the first studies on development and under development, and that happened in the years uh, 49 and uh, 51. There were these three uh, uh, studies uh, to uh, which are precisely about the new problems of the underdeveloped countries. And what is remarkable is to know that uh, two Nobel Prize participated in, in that uh, research, Art, Arthur Lewis and Theodor Schultz, who received later on uh, Nobel Prize for Economics. So what was new uh, about these three studies is that uh, they raised awareness uh, of the need for concerted action at the international level to accelerate the development of poor countries. Uh, now, now it doesn't seem to be big big deal this issue, but uh, I believe uh, believe me, at that time there was no uh, concern and interest for these uh, issues. Uh, what happens in the uh, after after the uh, month of the Second World War was this Marshall Plan for Europe. But it was seen from the from the uh, perspective of the of the interest of the United States of the interest of the Western Europe. So nothing to do with the interest of developing uh, countries. So we may consider this uh, um, uh, these three reports. I mentioned the measurement. I didn't I didn't uh, uh, take time to uh, read uh, and to tell uh, you more about that because. Uh, uh, it's time consuming, but they might be considered the first development agenda of the United Nations, which were the consequences, many consequences. But uh, uh, one of them is uh, the establishment of a, a special fund, which would uh, provide uh, uh, assistance in the fields essential to the uh, um, uh, development uh, of the less developed countries. So. Uh, you you might not see the importance, but the regular budget of the United Nations did not contain any resource devoted to, to uh, such economic assistance to developing countries. So the establishment of this special fund as a result of the three studies is a very important event. And also just to show how the uh, United Nations started to pay attention what is going on in, in the development of the third world is the establishment of the Economic Commission for Latin America and the Economic Commission for, for Africa, and also uh, the establishment of the United Nations Committee for Developing uh, uh, Development Planning. Again, again, I, know, I was amazed to see how often the United Nations use the, the Nobel Prize for Economics uh, for uh, their own activities. This was the case of uh, Jan Timbergen, 
who is the first uh, uh, chairman of the United Nations Committee for Developing. Now, another surprise. In the 60s, the, uh, the United Nations launched this, uh, um, let's say, uh, a political and uh, uh, catchword, uh, which is about the United Nations decades for development. I said it was a surprise to see that actually the, the country that uh, proposed these uh, decades were the United States uh, with, uh, with a very important statement by, made by uh, uh, President John Fitzgerald Kennedy, uh, who addressed the General Assembly in, uh, in 1961. Uh, I, I, I'm reading that because uh, it is important and it makes sense uh, for the uh, history that uh, followed that event. He said, political sovereignty is but a mockery without the means of meeting poverty and illiteracy and disease. Self-determination is but a slogan if the future holds no hope. It is, that is why my nation, which ha has freely shared this capital and technology to help others, uh, now proposes officially designated the decade of 1960s as the United Nations Decade of Development. Why is that important? Because that comes uh, after the emancipation of the former uh, uh, colonies. Uh, so uh, the, the newly independent countries uh, became a majority in the United Nations. So their interests uh, uh, elevated or elevated into the agenda of the United Nations. Of course, and of course the United Nations uh, reacted uh, immediately and the Secretary General at that time, Bhutan, uh, uh, said that uh, at the opening of the United Nations Development Decade, we are beginning to understand the real aims of development and the nature of development process. So this is not just, a, 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 let's say, a hypocritical political statement. So the Secretary General recognized that is the beginning of a new era. We understand the real aims of development uh, and the nature of the uh, development process. The, the, this uh, 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 another definition of development. Development is not just economic growth; it is growth plus change, uh, and that is again something that marked the difference from from the previous uh, for the previous uh, uh, era. What happens during that decade? First of all, I, I will not uh, I will not insist. Uh, first of all, is the fact that the issue of releasing resources from the arms race for disarmament was for the first time. Uh, put on the agenda. And the countries took very seriously that issue, considering that the diversion for peaceful purposes of the resources now development to military expenditure could and should be of benefit to all countries and could lead to the improvement of social uh, conditions. On the institutional uh, uh, side, the developing countries uh, created a collective voice and the, an important negotiating power in the negotiation on development by the formation of the group of 77, uh, which you, most of you belong to countries that are members of that group, the, the famous G77, which of course now uh, includes 134, 35 countries. So it's no longer almost uh, double the, the numbers. So that was very important because in the negotiations, you had a sort of collective voice not just individual, former colonial, or uh, uh, other developing uh, uh, countries. Also, uh, 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 equally important was the creation of the United Nations Conference on Trade and Development, uh, UNCTAD. Uh, UNCTAD is known, and UNCTAD was the first, uh, the first entity in the system that really was uh, specialized in the promotion of the interests of developing uh, countries. Uh, uh, the, the, the first Secretary General was an economist coming from the South, the, from Argentina, Raul Previch, very, very famous. And the special found, I, I, I spoke about it uh, uh, in, in the previous slide, transformed in what you know uh, nowadays has been the United Nations Development, uh, Development Program, one of the most important development institutions in the world, not just in the United Nations system. So then, more or less, uh, the practice was continued. Uh, the uh, General Assembly uh, launched a new uh, development case, the second one. And what uh, uh, the, the resolution that launched that decade uh, recognized that uh, 
no partial, sporadic, and half-hearted gesture, however well-intended, will not suffice. So uh, it, it is a kind of statement that uh, the uh, development decades was a good initiative, but it didn't produce the, the expected results. Uh, but uh, now I, I, I need to go back to it. I, I want to signal here the fact that uh, uh, it was at this point in time during that decade when uh, developed countries committed to provide uh, assistance to a minimum uh, level of 0.7% of their uh, GDP. Of course, we know that nowadays only, uh, uh, only I think uh, five countries are up to that uh, level. But again, it was, it was a very revolutionary move forward proposed by the, by the uh, United Nations. Um, another event important was the Conference on Human Development, which for the first time linked the issue of the protection of the environment uh, with a, a responsibility uh, to develop. They, they said in that conference, uh, 72, so uh, uh, this is where many things started uh, in the United Nations. They said that the natural resources must be safeguarded for the benefit of present and future generations. Uh, meaning that we are not allowed just for the sake of development to exhort the, those uh, uh, resources and, and uh, uh, limit the chances of the future generation. Another very important political uh, moment was the charter, the adoption of a charter of economic rights and duties of states adopted in 1974. Why was that important? As I told you, international cooperation for development was supposed to be uh, now an optional uh, uh, issue for the states. Uh, with this charter, although it does not produce uh, uh, mandatory or obligations for the state, was very important because for the first time, uh, indicated that uh, the states have also some duties, not just rights uh, uh, to, uh, to development. Uh, an event which at, at uh, its time was very resounding and very important and raised the stake of development was the new international economic order. I won't insist on that because this is a subject on itself, but I, I put it here because you have to know that this was the, the, probably the most ambitious documents ever adopted in the United Nations, because really it contains proposals that were meant to, to fix uh, uh, the, the issue of unfair uh, uh, trade between developing and uh, uh, developed uh, um, Excuse me. OK. Um, the most significant event for the third decade of development was the emergence of the right to development. So the, this was a sort of uh, uh, marrying happily the issue of, uh, uh, in, the, in the family of human rights, marrying the, the civil and political rights and the economic and social uh, uh, rights. Because during the, uh, the Cold War, this was a problem, this was an issue of dispute between East and West and also between North and South. The, the, the Western countries were champions of the civil and political rights. The socialist countries felt stronger on economic and social uh, rights, while the independent countries also, uh, they gave priority to economic and social rights. So uh, uh, the United Nations did its best by, by adopting two different conventions, two different covenants, one on civil and political rights and one on economic and social uh, rights. Both were adopted in 66 and effective uh, 10 years later. And uh, uh, a consequence of this uh, change of uh, uh, optics was the uh, declaration of the right uh, to uh, development. Uh, also, we have to, uh, to uh, note at this point in time, uh, the um, Brundtland report, the report of the World Commission on Environment and Development, which gave the first widely accepted definition of sustainable development. Now, of course, we enrich the concept, but this is what, you know, at the university, I, I learned myself that it means sustainable development. Sustainable development is the development that meets the, uh, the needs uh, of, the present, uh, of the present without compromising the ability of future generation to meet their own needs. It is what I, I told you before. 
Then in the in the nineties, we had this wave of optimism that everything is possible because the Cold War was uh, was over, and the UNDP launched uh, another revolutionary idea, and that is uh, human development. Again, we had a, a, a Nobel Prize involved in the conce conceptualization of the human development. The UNDP uh, produced these human development indexes. They were quite controversial seen at that time, but they became a very important uh, reference point in, in, uh, in uh, assessing the performance of states in development. And we are all very familiar now with a, a sequence of, uh, of um, such a human development report. Very briefly about countries in transition. So on the theoretical level, it appeared that the three worlds, you know, the first world, the capitalist world, the second world was the socialist world, and the th third world was the uh, developing countries. The, the, uh, with the end of the Cold War, this categorization, you know, lost importance. And for a while, we were faced with a notion of countries in transition. What, what does it mean countries in transition? There was a resolution of Gen General Assembly, which uh, although it doesn't give a definition, they refer very precisely to the Eastern European countries, which were not appropriately involved in the world economic system. And they need, they need a gradual convergence of views of the own economic policy. The point is, in other words, that uh, transition meant at that time the end of central planned economies and the triumph of liberal capitalism. So for a while, for a while, uh, this notion stayed on the agenda, but then once, once that some, uh, some uh, former capital, uh, communist countries uh, uh, sought membership of the uh, European uh, Union, then the issue of transition was no longer an embraced concept because some countries uh, were obviously uh, taking the transition towards the European Union. And then, the agenda for development of uh, 1994, it is a pity that it is neglected nowadays because that was a very successful attempt to incorporate all the theoretical and practical dimension of development on which the United Nations uh, elaborated for four decades. Uh, that was a mix of peace as foundation, the economy as the engine for progress, the environment as basis for sustainability, sustainability justice, uh, and democracy as good governance. And that, that particular agenda had the, the good imprint of, of a secretary general coming from the third world, Boutros, Boutros guys from, from Egypt. So, and there is something that he said, and uh, I would like to, to uh, quote from, from that because it is a very frank uh, testimony of what happens uh, uh, during the, the Cold War. So he said, uh, the concept of development and the gates of effort to reduce poverty, illiteracy, disease, and mortality rates are great achievements of this century. But development as a common cause is in danger of fading from the forefront of our agenda. The competition, be careful, the competition for influence during the Cold War stimulated interest in development. The motives were not always altruistic, but countries seeking to develop could benefit from that interest. Today, the competition to bring development to the poorest countries has ended, so there is no more competition. Many donors have grown wary of the task. Many of the poor are dispirited. Development is in, in crisis. We, we have to, uh, to believe the words of uh, Boutros Bali. Then the UN came at the next stage with the, uh, the Millennium Development Goals. What is important uh, about this uh, program is that uh, it was uh, uh, more ambitious and complex than the previous agendas and strategies. And what makes this especially its programmatic uh, nature? O what does it mean? They had specific target in the time frame. So it was not just, you know, uh, a sort of uh, no, no, it was a very rigorous uh, 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 commitment for development. And even if uh, uh, the, the not all the goals, maybe half of them, uh, were, were really achieved. It was very important that the international community uh, committed to do that. And then we come to the, to the last, uh, uh, last point, which is the, the uh, agenda for sustainable development, which in my opinion is the most ambitious and comprehensive document adopted by the United Nations in the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. But I guess in view of the 
topicality of the of the uh, agenda in view of your interest i guess uh, most of you are uh, are experts already uh, in uh, in uh, in that agenda i just wanted to say that there is a long story uh, between uh, the first notion of economics in the United Nations in the, in the 50s and what we have now on the, on the floor. So the agenda for sustainable development included all dimensions, the human dimensions, the peace dimensions, the security, the resources that could come from, from uh, the, the end of the uh, arms race, uh, the, the human aspect uh, of, of it, uh, the, uh, the, what, what they call at some point in time, the human face of uh, globalizations, and then we have a very complex uh, a complex uh, uh, notion and program of actions. And I'm glad that many of you who are working for that uh, are here present. And I hope that my presentation was of help. Thank you very much.